My husband wanted a baby to save our failing marriage while secretly falling for someone else. So I filed for divorce, and now he and his family won't stop begging me to come back. My husband, Greg, and I have been together for five years and married for three. We met back in college during our final semester and started dating, and we've been together ever since. Our relationship had its ups and downs like any other, but overall it seemed fairly normal. After our third wedding anniversary, Greg brought up the idea of starting a family. He felt that it was the right time to have a baby since we were both doing well in our careers and were in our mid-twenties. I agreed with him, and we began trying to conceive. After a few months, I finally got pregnant two months ago, and I was thrilled. Greg seemed excited too, but a week ago, I discovered that his happiness was nothing but an act. So far, only our close family and a few friends knew about the pregnancy, as we hadn't made a public announcement, but then I saw a notification on his phone from a co-worker asking if he was okay with the pregnancy, and it piqued my curiosity. Since Greg had insisted we keep the pregnancy quiet for a while, I couldn't understand why he would discuss it with a co-worker. He was holding his phone at that moment, and I could have confronted him then, but I had a gut feeling he wouldn't be honest with me. So later that night, I decided to go through his phone when he wasn't around. I felt like I had to snoop because I knew if I confronted him directly, he'd likely delete the messages, and I'd never get the truth. And thank goodness I did, because what I found in those messages confirmed my suspicions. I'm convinced he would never have admitted any of it if I hadn't already known the truth. I scrolled back through the messages to get the full context, and what I discovered was devastating. Greg had been confiding in a co-worker about a new hire he had recently started training, a woman named Natasha. I actually met Natasha at a work event, and I didn't think much of her at the time because Greg's behavior around her seemed perfectly normal. But the messages told a different story. It was clear that Greg was far more interested in Natasha than he let on. He talked to his friend in detail about how he couldn't stop thinking about her, even when he was with me. Although he claimed they hadn't crossed any physical boundaries yet, he admitted that he wouldn't be opposed if she made a move on him as bad as that was. It got even worse. Greg also mentioned how much I was irritating him lately, and how spending time with Natasha made him feel so much happier. He confessed that he would rather be at work with her than at home with me. And the only reason he acted like he was still in love with me was to avoid raising any suspicions because of my pregnancy. He said he hated sleeping in the same bed as me, but felt like he had no choice. His coworker seemed to try and talk some sense into him, telling him it was wrong to string me along when his feelings were clearly fading. What really hurt was realizing that Natasha had been in his life for about eight months, and that was before he suggested we start a family. Looking back, it was obvious that by the time he brought up having a baby, he already had feelings for Natasha. I couldn't understand why he would even suggest we have a child if he was falling out of love with me. He had every opportunity to change his mind, but instead kept pretending like everything was fine while actively trying for a baby. That betrayal hit me harder than anything else, and I couldn't figure out his motive for dragging me into this mess. I spent that night reading every word of those messages, and afterward, I just couldn't bring myself to sleep beside him. I ended up on the couch, unable to close my eyes. The next morning, when he found me there, he looked confused and tried to hug me but I pushed him away. I told him to stop pretending like he loved me because I knew the truth about Natasha. I had seen all the messages he'd sent to his coworker and decided I was leaving him. When I confronted him, he didn't even try to deny it. He just stood there in silence, staring at the floor. That made it even worse because he didn't even have the decency to explain himself. All night, I had rehearsed what I'd say to him, but when the moment came, I could only cry on the couch beside him. I still loved him despite everything, and part of me wanted to make it work, but I knew he didn't feel the same. Through my tears, I asked why he'd suggested starting a family if he already had feelings for someone else. Finally, he spoke up, saying that he thought having a baby might help him reconnect with me, that it would somehow fix our relationship. He believed that starting a family could reignite his feelings for me, but it hadn't worked, and he admitted he was still falling for Natasha instead. It broke my heart to realize that I was carrying the child of a man who didn't love me anymore. He apologized, but I didn't want to hear it. I packed a few things and left for my parents' house. He kept apologizing, but didn't make any effort to stop me. 
when I got to my parents' place, I broke down completely and told them everything. My dad was furious but stayed calm, promising that I wouldn't have to go back to Greg. He said he'd handle bringing the rest of my stuff from our home. My mom called my uncle, who's a lawyer, and asked him to connect me with a good divorce attorney to start the process as quickly as possible. I had the presence of mind to take screenshots of his messages with both his coworker and Natasha. While the conversation with his coworker was more incriminating, his chats with Natasha were mostly work-related, although there was some light flirting. I wasn't mad about Natasha specifically, it was his willingness to cheat that broke my trust. For me, it didn't matter if it was hypothetical, just the fact that he considered cheating was as bad as actually doing it. The worst part was him talking about how annoying I'd become and how he pretended to love me just to keep up appearances while trying for a baby. Everything he did was unforgivable, and I had no intention of going back to him. I decided to go through with the pregnancy on my own, and along with the divorce, I plan to file for full custody of our child. I was willing to allow him visitation, but refused to agree to shared custody until my child was old enough. I made this clear to my lawyer so we could proceed with the paperwork for both the divorce and custody. I thought my demands were fair. I wasn't asking for alimony or a settlement, just child support since it was his idea to have a baby in the first place. I just wanted a straightforward split of our assets. I blocked him the day I left, and two days after that, he was served the divorce papers. Since then, his family has been calling and texting me nonstop, begging me to come back to him. Apparently, Greg told them the whole story, and even though they know what he did, they think I should still give him another chance because he never physically cheated. They don't seem to understand emotional betrayal. I've ignored all their messages and blocked them on social media, but they're relentless. They claim that I'm being unfair by demanding full custody of our baby because Greg deserves to be a father. Now, I'm second-guessing myself, wondering if I'm wrong to want full custody. AITA for demanding full custody of my future child because my husband emotionally cheated on me? Update 1. Hi everyone. I spoke to my parents about what my in-laws have been saying, and they made it clear that it's ultimately my decision to make regarding my baby. They reminded me that it's my body, my child, and since Greg is the one who messed up, any sacrifices should come from his side, not mine. If he and his family want to challenge my decision for full custody, they're welcome to do so but we'll settle it in court. I'm not going to let them guilt trip me into ignoring my instincts. I genuinely believe that it's in the best interest of my child to be with me during those first few years. And right now, I can't see myself co-parenting with Greg. My feelings for him are filled with anger and resentment. I can't even look at him without feeling disgusted. That's why I'm firm on wanting full custody. Of course, we'll have to go through mediation first. And if we can't reach an agreement, then it'll be up to the family court to decide. I think that's the fairest approach. I explained this to Greg's family in a text, hoping it would finally put an end to their relentless messages. Honestly, I used to have a pretty neutral relationship with his family, but their attitude now has soured that. If they're going to act like I'm the villain for choosing to leave him, then I don't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And I certainly don't need their advice on marriage or parenting when they're defending Greg's behavior. They keep trying to downplay what Greg did, saying that at least he didn't physically cheat on me. But I'm too drained to explain that emotional cheating is just as damaging. I don't have the energy to debate this with them, I just want them to leave me alone. The only reason I even responded was to get them to back off. I also let them know that their harassment, constantly messaging me from different accounts even after being blocked, is not doing them any favors. I told them I'd be bringing this up in court, and I'm hoping that might finally make them stop. It's already tough enough dealing with this situation while pregnant, and the last thing I need is more stress coming from their side. Update 2. Greg and his lawyer finally responded to our petition, and to my surprise, they're not only contesting my demand for full custody of our child, but also challenging the divorce itself. I expected a fight over custody, but I didn't anticipate him trying to stop the divorce. I thought that was what we both wanted, given that he had admitted he was losing feelings for me, and even mentioned he'd be open to something with Natasha if she made a move. I assumed he was no longer interested in being with me. After discovering his betrayal, I certainly didn't want to stay in the marriage either. It seemed like divorce was the obvious solution for both of us. I guess I was wrong, because it seems like his real motive for contesting the divorce is to make it easier to get custody of the baby.
it probably wasn't even his idea. I'm sure his family is pushing him to do this. If he genuinely loved me, he would have reached out, or at least apologized by now. Even though that wouldn't have changed my decision, dragging out the divorce seems pointless to me because no court can force me to stay married to him. All this will do is make the process more drawn out and expensive, and I have no idea what he thinks he'll gain from that. But whatever his goal is, it's not gonna work. I've already discussed this with my lawyer, and he believes that at most, Greg might get a couple of mediation sessions or some mandatory counseling. But as long as I remain firm about wanting out of this marriage, we will eventually be granted the divorce. Plus, I have evidence of his intentions to cheat, so I don't see how he can win this. Initially, his response threw me off, but now I'm ready to fight for both the divorce and full custody of my child. I'm staying hopeful that things will turn out in my favor, no matter how long it takes, and I'm committed to seeing this through. Update 3. It's been nearly a month since I left home, and we've now started our mediation sessions. We've been assigned a court-appointed mediator to help us work through our issues, but honestly I'm convinced that mediation is just a waste of time in this situation. If things don't get resolved here, we'll be heading to family court, which is where I think this is ultimately going. Mediation is supposed to help couples find common ground and avoid going to court, but I just don't see that happening between Greg and me. We clearly have very different goals. He wants to cheat, and I want a genuine, loving marriage. It's obvious we're on completely different paths. The hardest part has been seeing Greg in person during these sessions. Being pregnant has thrown my emotions into chaos, and every time I see him, it makes me want to break down. It's been challenging to keep my composure, especially when I'm sitting in front of him, pretending everything is okay. I've done my best to stay calm, as per my lawyer's advice, and I've tried to avoid any direct interaction with Greg. For the first few sessions, he didn't even look at me, which was a relief. But recently, he started trying to talk to me, and I insisted on cutting those sessions short because I only wanted him to communicate through our lawyers. A couple of days ago, during our latest session, he kept quiet the entire time. But as I was leaving, he stopped me to ask if we could talk privately. I tried to brush past him, but he blocked my way, saying he wanted to apologize and didn't want things to end like this. I told him that if he was truly sorry, he could prove it by agreeing to my terms for the divorce and custody, then leaving me alone. That's the only apology I'd accept from him. Otherwise, he should just let this go to court instead of wasting my time and energy. Then I walked past him, returned to my car, and made sure to inform my lawyer about the incident. A few days later, my lawyer received an email from Greg, stating that he was now willing to accept the terms of the divorce, but still wanted partial custody of our child once the baby is born. Now, I need to consider whether this offer is worth accepting, or if I should continue fighting for full custody. At least he's finally put this option on the table, which is a step in the right direction because I'm exhausted from all the back and forth. Maybe this is the beginning of the end, and I can finally move on. Update 4. Hi everyone! It's been a few weeks since my last post, and I've had a lot on my plate lately. There were some complications with the pregnancy, but thankfully everything's been sorted out now. After much discussion, my lawyer and I decided to accept Greg's terms. He gets partial custody, and we proceed with the divorce. We communicated our decision to his lawyer, and now all that's left is to finalize the divorce and complete the paperwork. Once that's done, we'll stick to the custody arrangement we agreed on. It feels like a fair enough deal, and honestly, I just want to close this chapter and move on. Greg reached out to me after hearing that I agreed to his terms. He sent me an email thanking me and apologizing once again for everything he put me through, but those words don't hold much meaning for me anymore. I'm just relieved to finally move forward with my life, away from him. It's going to be tough, but I'm strong enough to handle it. And with my parents and friends supporting me, I know I'll be okay. Update 5. Hi everyone, it's been over six months since my last update, and I thought it was time to catch you all up. Last week, I gave birth to my beautiful daughter, and she has completely changed my world. My life revolves around her now, and I couldn't be happier. Greg has stepped up to his role as a father, doing his best to be present for our daughter. Since we have to co-parent, we've managed to keep things civil, only talking about matters related to her. I'm focused on my healing process and moving on from the past. And I think I'm getting there because when I see him now, I don't feel anything. 
from what I've heard, he started dating Natasha probably after the divorce was finalized. And honestly, good for him. As for me, I'm not interested in dating right now. My focus is solely on being the best mother I can be to my daughter. And that's all that matters to me. Greg and I are still working out the details to ensure we both have equal time with our daughter, but for now, he's been visiting her at my parents' place. My parents have graciously opened their home to him and his family, and we're all trying to keep things peaceful for our daughter's sake. Hopefully in the future, things will get even better, but for now, this arrangement is good enough for me. Commentary time! This story is a heartbreaking example of betrayal, resilience, and the complicated dynamics of trust, family, and moving forward. OP's journey from the devastation of her husband's emotional infidelity to her fight for stability and custody demonstrates her strength in a situation where her partner's priorities had shifted without her knowledge. Greg's misguided belief that having a child could somehow fix their marriage is a painful reminder that introducing new commitments cannot heal underlying issues. Instead of open communication, he allowed his interest in Natasha to fester, leading OP to experience not only a betrayal of trust, but the realization that her relationship wasn't what she believed it to be. OP's reaction to discovering Greg's intentions, to confront the issue head-on, and take proactive steps for both her future and her child's, highlights her strength and clear priorities. Her decision to demand full custody reflects her desire to protect her unborn child from the emotional instability that Greg's deception has brought into their lives. When Greg's family pressures her to reconcile because he didn't physically cheat, it underscores how many people misunderstand the severe damage that emotional cheating can inflict. OP's rejection of this narrow-minded view and her insistence on protecting herself and her child shows remarkable resilience. Over time, as OP navigates mediation and eventually agrees to shared custody, we see her make peace with the situation, understanding that co-parenting can provide stability for her child. Despite the complexities, she has placed her child's well-being above all else, reflecting the maturity and strength that she's carried through every stage of this difficult journey. Her final update, where she embraces her role as a mother while moving forward from her past with Greg, illustrates her growth and resilience beautifully. This story reminds us of the importance of self-worth, the courage to set boundaries, and the incredible strength it takes to prioritize one's happiness, even in the face of betrayal. OP's focus on building a stable, loving environment for her daughter speaks volumes about her character. Greg may have moved on with Natasha, but OP's story is a testament to the power of choosing self-respect and peace over a relationship built on false pretenses. What would you do if you discovered a partner's emotional betrayal while preparing to bring a child into the world? Share your thoughts and advice in the comments below. OP could use the support and insight from others who have been through similar experiences. And if you found this story powerful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more real life stories, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on new posts. Let's support each other and create a community where we uplift one another through these shared experiences.